候。Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, if you've managed to get through to my second video, welcome. Today's video is going to be talking about my HA recovery journey. I made myself a little coffee. So if anyone else is watching, get yourself a little snack, get yourself a coffee. For anyone who doesn't know what HA is, HA stands for hypothalamic amenorrhea and it's where a female loses their menstrual cycle for more than three months after originally having their period in the first place. This is usually down to things like uh, mental stress, under eating, over exercise. So I had HA for four years and I managed to get it back naturally. When I went to the GP, they told me first things first, go on the pill and I said, absolutely not. I'm gonna share with you my journey and what I did to get my period back after four years. So I hope it helps someone. So let's get into the video. So initially I started my period very late compared to a lot of girls which panicked me when I was younger because I thought I was never gonna have a period um, I'm pretty sure I was like 16 or 17 when I started mine and it was always very light and I had it for a few months and then one day it just disappeared and I had no idea why I didn't really care to be honest because not many girls at the time or at the moment really think they want a period because it's inconvenient it's painful and obviously the monthly bleed is just annoying so a lot of people don't really care or notice it but after a few years I kind of thought right this isn't normal like I need to act on it so when I was younger I was super sporty I do netball like three or four times a week I gym every day I get up at 6 a.m fast go to the gym get my workout done before school and um, I really got into running and this kind of age during sixth form everyone was focusing on what they looked like diet culture was bad social media was toxic and i just hit that rut in my life where all i really focused on was being smaller and comparison was the worst thing for me so i was exercising loads i wasn't fueling my body enough and i lost a lot of weight i was also at an age during sixth form where i was doing my a levels so i was super stressed like I took my A-levels way too seriously looking back, like staying up to 3am revising, like god Gabby. But I, I was a stress head, like I wanted to do things well and I wanted to be successful. So I would be stressing myself out and at the same time I was going through this mental health stage. The components all combined led to my HA, my loss of my period. So when I started to get a bit concerned about losing my period, I did go to the GP and I asked to get my bloods assessed. They got my bloods done and the initial time I went, they said, you're absolutely fine. Like there's nothing really wrong with them. They're a little bit low, there's nothing too much to worry about. And I was like, oh, well, okay, if that's what they say so, then it should be fine. Like that there's not much of an issue there. Anyway, months went by and I thought this isn't normal. Like I should be having a period. I'm not on the pill, where is it? Like something's wrong so i went back to the gp and they just said oh if you're really desperate to get your period go on the pill they said you're not you don't need to get pregnant at this age you don't want a child so it's not important at the moment it's irrelevant and oh my god when gps say this it really grates on me like there's so many consequences of not having your period and for a gp to kind of just disregard these sorts of problems at this age is so bad going on the pill it's an artificial bleed. It doesn't solve the issue. <sighs> Sorry, passionate topic. So I went away and I got my results from my bloods. I did all this research about missing periods and I came across HA and it made sense with me. It made sense that I was stressed from my A-levels. My body was stressed because I was way underweight compared to what I was before. Not necessarily underweight for BMI, or compared to other people, but for my own body, I was underweight and I over-exercised. Like I was doing so much exercise for the amount I was fueling my body. I thought this has got to be it. So I looked through my blood hormones on my own, not the GP, I looked at um, a HA website and I looked at studies and it showed me when your sex hormones are a certain level, if it's below a certain level, then your period could be lost due to HA. So my sex hormones were so low and the GPs did not pick up on it. 
So I thought, you know what, the GPs aren't going to help. So I know what I need to do. This was like such a hard time for me because no one in my family really knew about HA and period loss. Not many of my friends, I think, really knew about any about it either. I think I didn't really feel like I could talk to many people about it. It's not talked about enough on social media. And so I kind of just went about it on my own. I knew I had to reduce my exercise. I knew I had to fuel my body more and eat more calories. I knew I had to put on weight and I had to sort the stress out going on in my head. Um, and I knew it was going to be hard. Someone who's struggled with eating in the past, like the disordered behaviours, the body checking, body dysmorphia, trying to do the opposite from craving to be smaller to then you know you've got to be bigger was so, so hard to accept. And at the time I thought it was like the end of the world, like it was so hard. For a few years I was in like this quasi recovery stage where I would increase my calories a lot and then I'd see the consequences and put on weight. So then I'd restrict my diet again. Then I would eat loads again for a few days and then I noticed the effects and then I stopped eating a lot. So what were the main things I did to get my period back? I upped my calories a lot. I was eating about 2,500 plus calories a day and I was tracking. This is optional in HA recovery, but I decided to track as I knew I needed to hit that as a minimum and anything over was a bonus. I cut down my exercise. So I cut down my HIIT workouts every day. I cut out my long runs and stuck to just a few strength training sessions a week. And I did occasionally did netball, but nutrition was the key for me. I ate a lot more food and really focused on things like fats and carbs, good energy sources, and fats are great for rebalancing your hormones. They're so key. I also really prioritise rest and recovery. I sleep, I try to hit at least eight plus hours sleep a night. I didn't strive to hit 10k steps a day, like that's just counterproductive to trying to put on weight. Other stress methods, if meditation works for you, then meditation, things like listening to music, gentle walks. I even tried yoga, which I kind of enjoyed. Those sorts of things really help too. So I pretty much went all in with exercise reduction and increasing my calories in about January. And it took me about five months of consistently going all in and really committing to it until I got my period back. I had about two years of really trying and quasi recovery and it wasn't really me committing. And then I had about five months of proper commitment I'm not gonna mention how much weight I gained. Quite a lot of kilograms gained, which at the time seemed scary. But over time, HA recovery was the main form of recovery in terms of disordered eating, uh, body positivity, self-love, food freedom. I gained so much more than just weight on this journey. All you've got to do is just commit to it. It's trial and error. It's different for everyone but please just commit to the process and the rewards will be better than you thought. Not only you get your period back, but you gain your life back pretty much. In social life, you gain food freedom, you gain confidence and your health, which is the most important thing. As much as you don't want to gain the weight now, you've got to prioritise your health because there are consequences of not having your period. If anyone is struggling on their journey and they're watching this video, please, I can't recommend it enough that one, you go to your GP and get your bloods checked because there are other reasons why you can lose your period, such as PCOS, for example. So this may not be the reason you don't have your period, but if it is because your hormones are low, then please act on it. Don't listen to the GPs and just go on the pill to solve the issue because it doesn't. If you know deep down you need to do it, then please, you've just got to go for it. It's worth it in the end. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps somebody. I'm going to do more videos specifically on nutrition, exercise, stress, the main things I did to get my period back. So if anyone has any questions or any video recommendations or anything like that, then please do let me know and I'll do those for you. I also share all this information on my other social media, so my TikTok, my Instagram. So do check them out, I'll put them down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and yeah, see you in the next one.